Jayam Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Parvijakacharya Atsatadasat Sri Srimad is divine grace. Esi Bhaktivedanta Swami Sri La Prabhupada Ki Jai. Anath Koti Vaishnava Rindi Ki Jai. Namacharya Sri La Haridas Thakur Ki Jai. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. And all glories to Sri Sri Guru and Goranga Sri La Prabhupada. I don't need that. I have this. Om Namo Bhagavate Sutva Sudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Namo namaste to Vrishabhaya Satvatam. Vidura Kastaya Muhuku Yoginam. Narasta Samyatishayena Radhasa. Vadamani Brahmani Ramsjate Namaha Namo Namaste to Rishabhaya Sattavam Vidura Kastaya Muhuku Yoginam Nirasta Samyatisha Yena Radhasa Vadamani Brahmani Ramsjate Namaha Namo Namaste to Rishabhaya Satvatam Vidura Kastaya Muhuku Yoginam Nirasta Samyatisha Yena Radhasa Vadamani Brahmani Ramsjate Namaha Please chant. Namo Namaste to Rishabhaya Statvatam Vindura The moon must taste of Rishabhaya's Natvatam Vidura Kastaya Muhuku Yoginam Mirasta Samyati Shayin Radhisa Vadamani Brahmani Ramya Sattva Namaha Namo Namaste to Vrishabhaya Nathya Vidura Kastaya Muhuku Yoginam Mataji, 
Shraddhamani Brahmani Ramchite Namaha Namo namaste sa rishabhaya sattvatam Vidura kastaya muhu kuyoginam Nirasta samyati shayena radhasa Svadamani Brahmani Ramsyate Namaha Synonyms Namaha Namaha Te Let me offer my obeisances unto you Astu or Rishabhaya unto the great associate Satvatam of the members of the Yadu dynasty. Vidura Kastaya, one who is far from mundane. Who's wranglers? <laughs> Sorry. Muhu, always. Ku Yoginam, of the non devotees. Narasta, vanquished. Samya, equal status. That's a sayena, by greatness. Radhasa, by opulence. Svadamani, in his own abode. Brahmani, in the spiritual sky. Ramsjate, enjoys. Namaha. I do bow down. <clears throat> Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So, does everybody know who is speaking at this point? If you don't worry, don't worry about it. I'm going to tell you. So Shukdeva Goswami is speaking right now, just to keep it uh, straight as to who the speaker is. So let me offer my respectful obeisances unto him who is the associate of the members of the Yadu dynasty and who is always a problem for the non-devotees. He is the supreme enjoyer of both the material and spiritual worlds, yet he enjoys his own abode in the spiritual sky. There is no one equal to him because his transcendental opulence is immeasurable. Purport. There are two sides of the transcendental manifestations of the Supreme Lord, Sri Krishna. For the pure devotees, he is the constant companion, as in the case of his becoming one of the family members of the Yadu dynasty or his becoming the friend of Arjun, or his becoming the associate neighbor of the inhabitants of Vrindavan. As the son of Nandam Yashoda, the friend of Sudama, Sridam, and Mahomangala, or the lover of the damsels of Rajabhumi, etc. That is part of his personal features, and by his impersonal feature, he expands the rays of the Brahma Jyoti, which is limitless and all pervasive. Sorry. 
part of this all-pervasive Brahma Jyoti, which is compared to the sun rays, is covered by the darkness of the Mahatattva. The Mahatattva is the total material energy, for those who don't know the meaning of that word. And this insignificant part is known as the material world. In this material world, there are innumerable universes like the one we can experience, and in each of them, there are hundreds of thousands of planets like the one we are inhabiting. The mundaners are more or less captivated. Does everybody know what a mundaner is? If you don't, raise, raise your hand, please. You don't know? Everybody knows what a mundaner is? I'm going to call you. What's a mundaner? I love, I love it. Yeah, basically, yes. Part of this all-pervasive Brahma Jyoti, which is compared to the sun rays, is covered by the darkness of the Mahatattva, and this insignificant part is known as the material world. In this material world, there are innumerable universes, like the one we can experience, and in each of them, there are hundreds of thousands of planets, like the one we are inhabiting. The mundaners are more or less captivated by the unlimited expansion of the rays of the Lord. But the devotees are concerned more with his personal form, from which everything is emanating. As the sun rays are concentrated in the sun disk, the Brahma Jyoti is concentrated in Goloka Vrindavan, the topmost spiritual planet in the spiritual sky. The immeasurable spiritual sky is full of spiritual planets named Vaikuntas, far beyond the material sky. The mundaners have insufficient information of even the mundane sky, so what can they think of the spiritual sky? So Srila Prabhupada likes to make these comparisons. Uh, the mundaners are especially the people who are the scientists who think they know so much and, and just in a few days they'll know everything. This is their foolishness, this is their nonsense. So they were called mundaners, like today we see, oh yes, we're going to have a, uh, uh, we're going to have, uh, they're saying, you know, for the coronavirus, uh, a, um, what is that, for the immunity, a vaccine. Yeah, so first the president is saying, well, in three weeks we'll have a vaccine. And then the next report is, in three months we may have a vaccine. Now the latest one is maybe six months to nine months. They'll, they, they keep changing. Why do they change? Because they don't know what they're talking about, but they want to appear very authoritative. That's the pleasure of the materialist. Let them all think, I know something, I'm important, I'm valuable, uh, I, just listen to me and that's all that's necessary, and then vote for me, put me in office, let me get wealthy, and I'll give you nothing. That's the way it works out <laughs> usually. Big promises... No delivery. Yeah, okay. Therefore, the mundaners are always far, far away from him, Krishna. Even if in the future they are able to manufacture some machine whose speed may be accelerated to the velocity of the wind or mind, the mundaners will still be unable to imagine reaching the planets of the spiritual sky. So the Lord and his residential abode will always remain a myth or a mysterious problem. But for the devotees, the Lord will always be available as an associate. The Lord does not really communicate with the mundaners because the mundaners, they deny him. They look down upon him. They consider that the Lord or God is just a myth. If you can't see it, it doesn't exist. This is their idea. So, um, but the devotees, they pray. They look for help. They uh, surrender their hearts and minds. And so the Lord, seeing this, takes pity on them, us, us. He takes pity on us because he sees that we want to grow, we want to go, we want to improve, we want to in, in, go, become truly servants of himself. So therefore he takes pity on us and he reciprocates with us and he lets us know, he lets us feel himself. As we know, Krishna is, in super, is super soul, 
And the super soul, if he wants to give us his blessing, then he can do that. To those who are constantly devoted to serving me with love, I give them the understanding by which they may come to me. To show them special mercy, I, dwelling in their hearts, destroy with the shining lamp of knowledge the darkness born of ignorance. So that's the difference. The devotees pray, the devotees look up, the devotees beg, and so Krishna takes pity. The non-devotees, they want to be God, and so they come out with all these, no, in three months we'll have a vaccine. No, 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 six months, we'll have, no, nine months we'll have a, meanwhile, three years go by and they're still predicting. <laughs> so we can see the level, why do they have to say anything? Why not just say, we don't know, but we hope sometime we will. Because we don't know is a mark of some degree of ignorance. Who, if he's God, wants to, cl wants to be seen as somebody ignorant? No, nobody wants to be seen as ignorant. If you, because you're trying to make everyone think you're good, you're big, you're great, you're glorious, you're wonderful, you're splendorous. Well, how can you not know something when you're in that category? The only one who can actually say that, but Krishna himself stays very humble. The only one who can say that is the Supreme Lord or those whom he directly communicates with, like Srila Prabhupada. So, getting to uh, my next... Uh, uh, is the next uh, paragraph in the spiritual sky? Is that where I'm up? Huh? It is? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, the Lord will always be available as an associate. Yeah, so that's the difference. The Lord is our associate. And even if we're not able to communicate or talk with the Lord yet, don't worry. Things take time. It's like a flower. You put the seed in and it takes time to grow. Similarly, we are like Krishna's flowers. And we are slowly but surely growing. And eventually, when we become more devoted, more dedicated, more surrendered, more, uh, more surrendered and more uh, glorifying of the Lord and a better servant of the Lord, then those things will come quite naturally. Look at Haridas Thakur. He had many mystic powers, but he never showed them off except or unless it was very necessary. For example, when the, uh, when the Kazi, uh, Kazi was uh, like the spiritual master of the governor, when the Kazi said that this man, because he was originally a Muslim and now he's denied his mu mu Muslim roots and he's become a Hindu, then he is a disgrace to the Muslims, so let us kill him. First, whip him in 26 marketplaces. And if that doesn't, is it 26 or 22? Anyway, it doesn't make much difference. Uh, so whip him, and, and if he doesn't die there, then just throw him in the Ganges. So this is what happened. So they threw Haridas Thakur. Uh, in fact, he said to the people whipping him, if you, want, if you want to kill me, that's not a problem for me. Just go ahead and do what you have to do. <laughs> so... Uh, the, the, the reason he said that is because those who were whipping him were going to be whipped to death if they didn't kill him. So it was a big uh, problem. So he, wanted, he was feeling more pity, more sorrow, more compassion for the whippers than uh, himself. He couldn't care less. So finally, it was decided that they would just throw him into the Ganges and let him die. So they threw him in. Uh, actually, before they threw him in, he closed his eyes, took one breath, and then stopped breathing. Okay, so they thought he was dead. So they then took the body and threw it into the Ganges, and it went down, and it was floating uh, underneath. So everybody thought, well, Haridas Thakur, he's dead. Normally, he would be. A, a normal human being would be dead from all the whippings and all of those. But Haridas Thakur, he was not dead, because possibly, I don't know how long after, but it could be half an hour, an hour later, he arose from his samadhi position. Samadhi is a very high state of su super consciousness in which actually one may stop. Lord Chaitanya manifested this many times. He actually stopped breathing. The heart stopped beating. One may say, well, how can he go on living? Because he's not living by normal material standards. He's living by transcendental standards, which have different rules, different regulations, which are connected with the eternal rather than the limited trans 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 uh, transitory. So that's the difference. So there was Haridas Thakur using these mystic powers, which he'd normally never missed. He didn't have any time to use them. He was too busy all day and all night chanting Hare Krishna. He was not only chanting for himself, but he was chanting for the, for the insects that were growing on the floor. The birds were passing. He was giving them uh, the Hare Krishna. He was compassionate, kindly, 
merciful to everyone, not just thinking about his own advancement, because basically he didn't really have anywhere to go. He was already up there. He was already absorbed in Krishna. There was not a moment that he was not thinking of Krishna and chanting Krishna's holy name. So we can learn from Haridas. He wasn't worried about getting mystic powers either. If they came, they came. And he'll use them as is necessary, as in this incident that I just gave uh, to all of you. And so it was amazing, because nobody even expected that Haridas Thakur had such powers. But he had many, many powers. But the, the test of his powers is he was completely humble about them. He did not show them off. He did not try to put on a, 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 big, uh, a big show. <laughs> what is this? Anybody know? Oh, is that a hose out there? Is it coming? The end of the world about to come now? No? No. Okay, then I'll continue and hopefully finish the lecture. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, the important point uh, that I'm trying to make uh, here is that, um, is that mystical powers come quite naturally and quite automatically for those who don't care about them but are very sincere very serious, very devoted, and are ready to give up not one life for the pleasure of the Lord, but a millions and millions, infinite number. Because they don't care for their body except for this loving service of God. They don't care if they get cut, they don't care if they fall, they don't get injured, as long as it's in the loving service of Krishna. And if it is the loving service of Krishna, Krishna will be obviously be pleased that I'm making this sacrifice and not even caring about it, not even thinking or hoping that Krishna will reciprocate and give me some great blessing, maybe some mystic power, or maybe he'll make me more, look more devoted, maybe I'll have more mystical, uh, what you call, uh, manifestations from my tear, tears from my eyes and sh his shivering and shaking of my hands or perspiring. Uh, or uh, any of these different types of powers which come, their symptoms. He wasn't concerned about those things. His only concern was saving the world, saving himself was automatic. And we have to be thinking of this when we're doing our service, thinking of the Lord. My Lord, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to lovingly serve you. Help me to love you more. Anyway, uh, I'm leaving the... Uh, uh, the, uh, the text, so I don't want to do that. So, uh, can somebody tell me where I left off on? Hmm? In the what? Uh, the, 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 um, uh, the immeasurable spiritual sky? Is that what it is? Oh, in the spiritual sky. Thank you very much. Okay, I have it. In the spiritual sky, his opulence <clears throat> is, that his meaning, Krishna's opulence, is immeasurable. The Lord resides in all the spiritual planets, the innumerable Vaikuntha planets. By expanding his plenary portions along with his liberated devotee associates. But the impersonalists who want to merge in the existence of the Lord are allowed to merge as one of the spiritual sparks of the Brahma Jyoti. They have no qualifications for becoming associates of the Lord either in the Vaikuntha planets or in the supreme planet Goloka Vrindavan, described in the Bhagavad Gita as Madhama, and here in this verse as the Svadharma of the Lord. This Mad, excuse me, Madhama or Svadharma is described in the Bhagavad Gita 15.6, that's chapter 15.6 text as follows. Natal Natadvasayate Surya. Nad, do it again. Natadvasayate Suryo. Na shank shanko na pavakaha. Yagatvana nivartante. Tadhama paramamama. The Lord's Svadhamma does not require any sunlight or moonlight. In other words, these higher planets, they don't require sunlight or moonlight because why? The Lord is the source of all light. So from him, the whole, all the Brahma Jyoti is emanating. He is the source of the Brahma Jyoti. <clears throat> so wherever he is, his light is with him. And he can intensify it if he wants to. He can minimize it if he wants to. Because he is the Supreme Lord in charge of all that he manifests. That's why we call him the Supreme Controller. 
The Lord's Svadharma does not, by the way, that's not Dharma, it's Dhamma, D-H-A-M-A, -A, does not require any sunlight or moonlight or electricity for illumination. That Dhamma or place is supreme, and whoever goes there never comes back to this material world. Uh, the Vaikuntha planets and the Goloka Vrindavan planet are all self-illuminating, and the rays scattered by those Svadhamma of the Lord constitute the existence of the Brahma Gyoti. As father further confirmed, the Vedas, like the Mandaka Upanishad, two two ten, Kata Upanishad, two two fifteen and Svetasvatara Upanishad 6.14. Natatra suryo vatina chandratarakam nema vidyuto banti kuto yamagni tameva bantham anubhati sarvam tasya basa sarvam idam vibhati in the Svadhamma of the Lord, there is no need of sun, that's the translation, no need of sun, moon, or stars for illumination, nor is there need of electricity, so what to speak of ignited lamps. On the other hand, it is because those planets are self-illuminating that all effulgence has become possible, and whatever there is that is dazzling is due to the reflection of that Svadhamma. One who is dazzled by the effulgence of the impersonal Brahma Jyoti cannot know the personal transcendence. Therefore, in the Ishupanishad, number 15, many of us have memorized this, it is prayed by the devotee that the Lord shift, shift his dazzling effulgence so that the devotee can see the real reality <clears throat> and not this blazing, dazzling uh, form. Thus, Hiranmayena patrena satasya pihitam mukam tatvam bhumshan apavrenu satyadamaya drishtayam. Which means, quote, O Lord, you are the maintainer of everything, both material and spiritual, and everything flourishes by your mercy. Your devotional service, O Bhakti Yoga, is the actual principle of religion, Satya Dharma, and I am engaged in that service. So kindly protect me by showing your real face. Please, therefore, remove the veil of your Brahma Jyoti rays so that I can see your form of eternal bliss and knowledge. So this is very uh, apropos of the devotee. The devotee is not looking for the, uh, for the light, He's looking for the source of the light, and that is Krishna. But he doesn't really care about Krishna as the source of the light. He cares of Krishna as one whom he can lovingly serve, whom he can lovingly or kindly offer his body, his mind, his thoughts, his words, and whatever he has, whatever talents he has, whatever abilities he has, whatever Krishna has granted him, he wants to offer it back to Krishna as a way of saying, thank you, my Lord. I'm so grateful that you have given me this because by your giving me this, you have enabled me to offer some service to you. If I had no skill, if I had no ability, I have no knowledge, what could I do? Nothing. But you have so mercifully, so lovingly, so kindly given me these abilities and these, uh, these uh, uh, ideas and thoughts. You've given me all of these so that I can lovingly serve you. Please help me to serve you better. Serve you with more uh, w with more ability. Uh, whatever I am giving you is obviously less than what you truly deserve. Because you have given me so much, then <laughs> what I am giving you is nothing in comparison. So I ask you, please help me to become better. You deserve more. I want you to have more. And yet I'm so limited with my abilities, my talents, my hands, my legs, and all of this. Just enable me because I want to see you smile more. The Lord is always blissful, always 
pleased, always satisfied in his heart of heart. He, he, he doesn't really need any of that, but he enjoys the reciprocation that comes between himself and the devotees. So as the devotee tries harder to, uh, to, uh, uh, to serve, lovingly serve the Lord, and the Lord sees that he's trying, trying means, for example, you're dressing the deities, you're looking at everything. You're looking at how the flowers are set. You're looking at the color of the garment. You're looking at the design of the garment. You're seeing and, and appreciating everything and asking, my Lord, is this good? Is this okay? Have I picked the wrong color? This is the wonderful reciprocation because the Lord says, no, 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 no. you inside, you say, well, wait a minute. It's like, but you're purple there. The purple doesn't go there. We need a red. So he puts the red there. Is this okay? It's a communication, not merely throwing cloth on the Lord's body. Not at all. It's a communication of one person who loves the other person. And when the other person receives what he actually likes, what, what the devotee has given him and makes the... Or Tells the devotee in the heart, yes, that's mine. And the devotee gets a blast of bliss, a blast of happiness and joy because the Lord is very much appreciating the care, the attention, the thoughtfulness that uh, the devotee is giving. So what happens is that the devotee becomes very, very blissful, very happy. Uh, not so blissful that he loses consciousness on the altar. That doesn't happen, thank God for that. <laughs> so anyway, <clears throat> uh, the devotee at the end, he feels Wonderful that he's given the very best and he has had some communication with the Lord through co communication through his willingness or eagerness to want to do a great, wonderful, amazing job. Not so that people can praise him or honor him or glorify him, but that people will praise and glorify and honor the figure of the Lord when the doors open. And when the doors open and everyone says, wow, look at that, amazing. Sometimes I, I just stand there kind of transfixed. One day, for the boss is near me, sometimes I look at him. I say, is that incredible or not? You know, because this is the way the Lord also enables us to appreciate him more and more the more we try to please him through our loving devotional service. Now that, it covers everything. You're a mother, then you want to give your child the very best as the Lord would want it. So the Lord sees that, and he will, of course, uh, he will uh, reciprocate in his own way. So we should always, always uh, be striving to give the Lord what he wants, not what we think he wants. What we, you ask, is this, is this what you want, Lord? I don't know. I'm ignorant. I'm a fool. But you know, so please guide me. I'm praying to you. I'm begging you. I want you to get what you want, not what I think is good. Because I'm a fool. I'm a rascal. I'm a good for nothing. And you know that. And I know that. And I've committed so many offenses and sins and wrongs throughout my life. But I want to make it better. I want to make it good. I want to do that which will please you. And if you're pleased, then my heart will open up and I will be able to give you more and better. And in so doing, that will make me happier when I see that your smile, which was only so many inches wide, has gotten broader. And if your smile, excuse me, if your smile has gotten broader, then somehow or other you have enabled me. You have enabled me. I have done nothing except what you have enabled. Without you, I could do nothing. I am a walking zero. My dear Lord, I, have, I, I, I am nothing except what you make me. I have nothing except what you give me. I do nothing except what you uh, enable me. So I want nothing except pure love of your lotus feet. If I have pure love of your lotus feet, well, I will have everything. There is nothing that I will desire because I will be completely overflowing with happiness, with joyfulness, with peacefulness and goodness. Because I will be one with you in the truest sense that I will be representing as our Srila Prabhupada did. He represented Krishna. And that's why we all love them, because Krishna is so lovable. And that lovableness manifested, passed into Prabhupada. When Prabhupada smiled, it looks like a hundred suns, maybe a thousand, no, ten thousand. <laughs> so when Prabhupada smiled, you couldn't help but feel uh, bathed by that blissful, uh, benedictive uh, manner. So we are very, very grateful. Sometimes we don't realize that what Prabhupada has given us, He's given so much. If we compare what we could be outside with, with, with what we have now, it is a, definitely a night and day experience. So with that understanding, we should always be 
as it says in the in the uh, uh, the the eight verses that we sing in the in the morning, by the mercy of the spiritual master, one receives the benediction of, of Krishna. Without the grace of the spiritual master, one cannot make any advancement. Therefore, we should always remember and praise the spiritual master. At least three times a day, let me offer my humble obeisances unto the lotus feet of spiritual master. Actually, it should be, uh, the, the, I think Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur wrote that. He's being easy on us. Three times? Come on. Three times, that's all we offer our respect. Should be done wherever we look and we see the workings or the manifestations of, of Srila Prabhupada. My dear Lord, Shri, my dear Srila Prabhupada, thank you for giving me this wonderful, this delight. This is all the blessings of Krishna coming through you. I should be constantly thinking of you day and night because you are so valuable. You are so amazing. You are so awesome. There is nothing like you. So please stimulate me, engender in me the realization of how great you are. Because once I feel and know uh, 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 the, how great you are, then I cannot stop praising you. I cannot stop bowing down to you. I cannot stop doing some service for you. I cannot stop turning someone on to the philosophy that you have so nicely and so eagerly uh, turned me on. So the basis of this entire talk, I, I forgot to mention one point, and it'll only take a second, is that in the Brahma Jyoti, there is no service. No service. How would you all like to be just sitting around just waiting for the light? Yeah? Very, very productive. So, um, this is the difference. The devotee loves to do things. It is the nature of the, uh, of the uh, as, as Lord Chaitanya said, Jivera Swarupahoy Krishna Nityadas. The constitutional position of the living entity is to be what? An eternal servant of Krishna. And when we act in the position of what Krishna desires us to be, enabled us to be, then we are rightly situated and being rightly situated, Krishna can only smile on us, encourage us, and enables us to be more and more his. Thank you very much, Hare Krishna. Guy, my will. Thank you. Hare Krishna, my dear. Caught you off guard that time, didn't I?